Hey, what's going on, y'all? My name is Tom Mizzle. You're watching my channel, Mizzle14, and I'm here doing a review of Pose Season 1, Episode 6, Love is the Message. This was a good episode. It was very emotional at parts. It has a good message, and um, good message of living life, joy of life. Don't take life for granted. Make your mark, because at the end of the day, you don't know when stuff going to happen, and you don't know when you all get leave the earth. And you just gotta live and love, especially if you have a loved one. Don't be stuck in the past. Move on. Um, live the future. Love. Love more. Do more. Love yourself. Love others. Love the one you left behind, and move on to find new love. So it was different things that going on. So the first um, scene in this episode is when remember. Patty met Angel, so she wanted to talk. So we get the opening with Patty and Angel talking. And basically, Patty was asking her, um, where did they meet? She, um, Angel told her they met at the pier, and he come regularly to pick her up. And she said, did you have sex? She said, at first we didn't have sex, but we did eventually have sex. And Angel said, you want to know if I knew about you? Yes, I knew about you. I wasn't naive to know that he has someone but he rarely talks about you but I knew exactly what I was getting myself into messing with her and um and later on in Ville Ville in that Patty asked her what you doing at the space spot with all these gay men and drag queens and stuff and before Asia told her who she really is Patty's thinking that it was just another woman because maybe Angel is a transsexual woman, transgender woman, but she looks passable as a woman. So it's easy for people, somebody to mislead her as a full woman when she's not really a, she's a woman, but she still has an extra piece down there. So she's technically a man, but she's a woman in her eyes, in her world, she's a woman. But so when Angel told her she a transsexual, she was like, what? And even then with Patty when she Angel told her Patty didn't want to leave her, she said when what did not want to believe her. So she said, Show me, prove to me. She said, What? Prove to you or what? What you want me to show me my dick? She said, Yeah, prove to me. And she said, No, I got boundaries, I have morals, I can't be doing that. Um, I know my truth. I know that every day I'm looking at um, I'm a woman, but I've been minded that I have something down there. So um so it's nothing. Um, then I think Patty got the left because she was like, "This is too much." I guess she was too much. She said, "I gotta go." She got everything she wanted to know. And asked him, "Did she use protection when they have sex?" She said, "We use protection all the time." And that's it. So we went to pray tell. Went to see his boyfriend, Cortez. Who was in a um, hospital bed. He's dying from AIDS. Um, no, ammonia. He died from ammonia. That's what he died from. And he was reminiscing about that. And then he went to see, drunk as hell, playing the same song, Love is a Message, over and over and repeat people's like, oh my gosh, it's ridiculous. Blocker and them was like, what the hell? Change the song. Like, come on. He was in his feelings because his love of his life is dying. Also, he found that he got diagnosed with um, HIV, so he's in his feelings like he's about to be in that same boat with his boyfriend in some way, shape, or other if he don't get his life together. So he's drinking, he's drinking, he's drinking his life away, drinking his problems, trying to drown his sorrows. And everybody, um, Blanca and the family sees it and is like, we need to talk to him because this is ridiculous. And it was like, he changed since he got the results. And they on they had this intervention now this intervention didn't go so well because she went to cook um, empanadas and they had ham and pray tell was reading the fuck out of everything we read all of them we uh, Blanca read the food read everything is possible it said what I'm doing here and it said they wanted to have intervention and it the kids were saying the song is whack, you need to change it, you keep playing the same song. He said, you brought me here, you could have taught me this privately. 
and you know, and I'm disappointed because I know all your secrets, secrets that nobody know, and I knows it, and you want to bring me here and stuff like that. And Blanca said, "Pray tell, stop, calm down." He pissed off. He said, "Don't be coming over here, feeling ambushing me about things, and tell me how I should feel, how my feelings." Saying every boyfriend I had dying of AIDS and dying and leaving me, and I'm still living alive, and I had to go through, and I had to keep burying them, burying them. I went through more, many life and deaths than anybody could buy on this table. And you gonna tell me how I feel, how I should act? No, mind your business and leave me the hell alone. And he just walked off, and it was like he ba he hurts by the. The dying, the death, HIV, the AIDS, all this everything. He's lashing out. And also his boyfriend is dying, Cortez, his love of his life, about to leave him soon. He really can't take it. So he is in his feelings. And he's just drinking a lot, way more than he needed to be. Later on, Patty went to the doctor because... Sorry. Patty went to the doctor and... She was getting tested, but she wanted to get more tests. And he said, she's fine and everything. She said, can I get a um, STD test? And he said, a heterosexual woman, man and heterosexual woman don't need to get tested because you usually fine. And I said, that's another misconception. Because she married and straight doesn't mean that she can't get it. And that's the stigma, um, stereotype, stigmatization that HIV, STDs is only a gay diseases. And it's saying, no. Hello, straight people gets that too, and the fact that you said, "Oh, she a married heterosexual woman, she not um, likely to get STDs." I said, "Don't doesn't matter." She said, "The only way that happened if somebody step up, you or your husband step up." She said, "Stand," and he said, "Well, it still doesn't get anything if he he been using protection." She said, "No," and remember, Angel told her that we protection all the time, so she was lying, but she's still disgusted. Cause you know, woman's like find out her man is cheating. With another man, technically, even though it's a woman passing, and it's like she wanted to find out if she's not getting anything from him. Like you know that little fear and stigmatization of, oh, he cheated with a man, so he must have got something, and you're gonna pass it on to me, and then tell me anything, and we having sex. Um, so that was powerful. I mean, that's most common down these days, anyway, of that happening, of the misconceptions and rules of getting tested so then we get to the hospital play tell talk to um Cortez and they was um talking for a while and play tell talked to the nurse and he was like why is it so dead in here it's like so dry and everything she said we don't have the budget we understand and we been working all hard to keep these AIDS patients alive as much as possible and we don't have the luxury to do things. It's like, I want a lot to do stuff, but we can't. We don't have the budget. She said, wait, hold up. Aren't you an entertainer? Why you don't come and do something? And it's kind of like he liked the idea. So later on, Paytel asks, Sorry. Paytel asks Blanca when she come and sing because he want to have a cabaret, cabaret, event at the hospital for the AIDS patients and she said I look like a good idea and he said you can sing for me she said what you make you think I can sing he said I know your tune it's, uh, it's in your aura it's in your whole body language and everything you got it and she said yeah I got something but she said she had a um and she can't because she had a date that same night it will be Saturday night same night that she made plans with going to Darius now Darius is this guy that came outside and was flirting with Blanca after that category that Ricky won, Ricky won this category of Bush Queen Body, and he did a good job, muscle bound, everything, flexes muscle, won grand prize, and um, Blocker went outside, tried to smoke a cigarette, here comes this Darius, big, good looking type man, out there, flirting, you can tell he's like a F boy, looking tease, and Flirting with Blanca, make her feel good, saying all the right words, but he's kind of corny because he always do a lot of these pickup lines to try to get with Blanca. And you know, little Poppy was out there, little Poppy was like deflected and trying to be protective of his mother. He said, Nah, my mother's good, you good, you corny, move out the way, oh, crazy. It was that. And then later on, Darius 
came to the scene again because this was a time that um, he was very persistent of very persistent of getting trying to get Blanca and Blanca was hesitating and he said pick more pickup lines more corny lines and it got broken down she said okay where we gonna go out he said the Saturday night that's the same night that uh, Praytel was gonna do that event so that's why she told Praytel she's not gonna do it because she had a date and Praytel said with that fine ass man there is you better go ahead girl go ahead get it I wish I was I know something I haven't had nothing for a long time and so have fun. I, I like it that he didn't block her and say, oh, don't, oh, why you didn't come do this and like that? Because he wants to apologize. Because later on, before, he invited her to the um, event, told her about the Cabaret event. She went to, he went to her salon, her job, and, and she, he was getting his um, manicure. And he went to apologize for his acting. He said he realized he was doing way too much drinking, doing um, a lot of stuff. That he needs to be doing, and he lashed out the wrong people, especially his family, the person who cared about him and close to him. So he went to apologize, and that's what it's talking. Now, the night, oh no, before that, Blanca went to go um, get some freaking clothes because she wanted to go on a date. She wanted to get something nice, and Lulu, Candy, and some two other people was there. And well, I think one of them looked like Jujubee. Not Jujubee. I think it looked like Jujubee. Wait. It looked like her from Drag Race. I want to make sure. But it looked like her. And not Jujubee. Jigglypuff. It looked like Jigglypuff from Drag Race. And they were always talking. Blocker was saying she had this, met this guy. She's so tired. And I said, ooh. You finally get, you finally um, raise out the dead, right? raise out the ashes. They say that word, but basically raise out the ashes, and you're gonna get you some. And you mean you be dried up dust, like you need to do, you need something. And Cole Candy, she said, "Oh, what Jesus came out and blessed you with this thing." So they, they was clowning her, clowning her because she haven't got anything for a while, and she be close on stuff off. And it's like, come on, it's time to do something, cause you know, they um. They frisky, they foul, they they wild, they frisky, and they can do that. They love it. So they was talking, talking after that, after Block was explaining this person, and he, she said he's corny, but I love him. He made, not I love him, but I like him because he made me happy. She said corny how? He said he he uh, he pick he does only pickup lines, and they all was like, hold up, did he said this? Did he said that? And Blanca was like, yeah. They said, oh, that's Davius. They said, what? So Blanca was like, y'all know Davius? And she, they said, yeah, we all know Davius. And then they said, like, oh, well. Um, you said, she said, Corny, it was something she said. And he said, well, I mean, play and he's a value. And he said, oh, he got some value. Basically telling he got some debt. And... And they say, y'all fucked up? She said, yeah, we all fucked up. And he's nothing. He's like a fuckboy. But they say, you know what? Go out. It's like, stop being a fool. It's only a, di a dinner. You go it's a free meal. Don't enjoy yourself. Have a good time. It's not like they asking you to marry them. Just have a good time. You needed this. So then when we get to this cabaret event. Pray tell was building cap um, cabaret to the thing. They was um, going to the event that he came up, that he planned this, and found a piano, a person who could play the piano, and he could sing. The block was like, I'll be there. And it was a lot of the patience. And Pray Tell sung this song, it was so beautiful, it was ded ded dedicated to Cortez. And it was so beautiful. It sang, he sang well, it was nice, it was emotional. You could tell that Cortez was feeling it, and he started tearing a little bit. And here come walking Blanca, and after he finished performance, they all was clapping. I forgot the song he sang, and he said, "What you doing?" He went over there. And she said, "I canceled it. It was bad vibes with that guy." And but I want to come to support you. And he said, "Sounded good, looking good, and everything." It's game, and it's I'm proud of you. And he started. You said, "You stop making me cry, girl." Shit. And walked up, and then he introduced Blanca to sing. And she said, I think Home's Out of Home, that same little song that, um, what was her name? 
that Diana Wall sang in Oz, it was a beautiful song. She sung well. She, it was a beautiful name. At one point, she stopped at Foles because she saw one of the patients. And I think and her, her life flashed on her eyes and said, this could be me if I don't get myself act together. And I'm looking at her. She's looking at the lady and was like, wow, if I don't take care of myself, I could be that. I could look like that. So, so it got stunned. So Playtel saw it and was like, she came, he came up and sung a little bit. And it got her back open and got her back comfortable with singing. And they became a duet. And baby, they sung that the hospital room down. They really sang. They, they ain't sing, they sang, and it was good, it was beautiful, their voices was well, it matched together, the people was clapping, it was happy, I loved it, it was nice, I loved that scene, it was very emotional, I mean, I didn't have no tears out of my eyes, but I was feeling the song, and like, I, I had to rewind it again to watch it again, because I was, it was nice, it was a beautiful Message. It was a beautiful song and it was beautiful things for these patients to hear it. And they all was in tune to the song. And because they don't have much entertainment. So for this to happen, to show your appreciation, to show that you could give them hope to live on, to fight, and to at least to have some entertainment, it was beautiful. It was very beautiful. Now, um, uh, Patty and Stan went to a psychologist, or a psychiatrist, one of them, that she has been seeing for a couple of times now. And he was like, what am I doing here? Because at first he was thought she, she was pregnant, it was something else. And she said, no, we see soon. And that's who told him that it was a psychologist that she'd be seeing and we think it was a good time to talk to her. And he went there, it was like a couple therapy session. And she said it's comfortable it's a safe spot a space i'm not going to take any size it's your freedom to talk and basically she was laid out the ground rule she said she knew about the fair she confirmed it by talking to angel that you got this house down at the plot her apartment for her he was dealing with each other y'all was having sex she knew everything and he's like he can't deny it because she said she confirmed with angel so the name and like the person and she basically said, you know what, you have the least a year and I think you need to go to that spot and stay there until I figure I feel like I'm really comfortable for letting you see your kids. So that started breaking them down. And then, not that, he said, he was stunned and so, again, want to say too much. But she was like, I need to get myself better. I'm expecting you to keep paying the bills until I be able to afford the bills myself. And I'm going to get myself a job. I got to find me, I got to look after me, and I want to know who I am because I haven't been happy in my relationship for a long time. And now this came about, it made me realize I need to focus on me. And she asked him, why did you cheat it? She said, I know why men cheat, but why did you try to cheat with a transsexual? Are you homosexual? And this one stands on the break it down because he confused. He don't know who, who he, what he is. He don't know if he's straight who that likes women. He don't, like he don't know that he likes every now and then he likes a transsexual or is he bi, is he really gay and he covering it up. We don't know. So he started breaking down. Then he Stan went later on to his job and confront um his boss Matt. Because Matt the one who bugged bug the wife ear that he has been having an affair because Matt um, Stan was getting five deals behind Matt back and Matt didn't like that so Matt went ahead and got even and Stan found out it was him and punched him Matt punched him back starting to beat him up I was like Stan how you gonna go over there and start getting your ass with I'm about, oh well and he said stay away from the wife and he said oh I'm his, I'm his, I don't hate you I just resent you like you got everything I wanted I told you I was helping you and you flewed it up I gave you a raise Basically, he was done with Stan. So Stan said, you know what? Stay away from my wife. And he said, I already have. And we had this little uh, category with Benji Realness. And, you know, little Poppy. He's a little cute self and all that stuff. It was like doing it. Doing it with his one DMC, little Jack um, track suit with the chains. 
And he was nice. He won grand prize. And that's where Darius approached Blanca. It was like, yo, you stood me up. What's happening to happen Saturday night? And that's where he got surrounded by all the ladies that he had fucked. And she said, no, I'm not going to be played and all that stuff. And he said, oh, you trying to be tough because you got to go. And she said, no, I'm going to be me and I'm going to be truthful. And I'm not dealing with you. So he walked off. Um, then we get to see that Angel walk back to walk back to no she didn't walk back she went back to the peep show spot that she was working at and remember Stan didn't want her to work there so she stopped working there for a little bit and stayed at the place and now she's not at the place anymore she went back home so she went back to start working and then when she was getting it, um, when getting called, and she had a call, she was getting ready. She, that's when she was staying. Because Stan left the job all bloody up and everything. I think he got himself together. He's not at the house, so he's staying at that apartment. And I guess he went to go to Angel. I said, fuck, he, he got freaking kicked out. So why not just freaking do what he got to do, right? And they were staring. They locked eyes. They were staring at each other, and that's how the episode ended. But backtrack to something that leads to something that I really want to talk about now. Pray tell was going to see Cortez a lot. And you, you can tell he's getting sicker. He's getting sicker. And he knows he's about to die soon. So Cortez said, turn off the TV. Because they was watching the TV. He said, turn off the TV. I'm going to talk to you. So he turned it off. And Cortez said, he said, promise me that. He gave his final wish, basically his final declaration before he knew he knew his life was going to end soon. So he gave Prater a final declaration that promise me when you move on, I don't want you to be stuck looking at me. I don't want you to be stuck in this hospital. I don't want you to be stuck in the past, stuck with the world could be. I want you to live. I want you to live your life. I want you to love again. I want you to find some peace, peace for me. I need you to look to your future and love. Promise me, promise me that. And when you know somebody you love is dying, you don't want to say anything that upset them. You want to give them a peace of mind. So, Pray Tell broke down crying because he said, yo, he knows that his guy about to leave soon. He loves him, but he knows he has to move on. So he promised Cortez that, yes, I promise, I promise. And that led to a different attitude at the scene when they had with the banjo realness that Poppy won. They was playing a song at first. They said, oh my God. But he said, you know what? Let's change it up. After Poppy won, he said, I'm coming up. Uh, I want the world to know. John divorce and again. And it changed. And it gave him a different attitude, outlook in life. So when Blanca went to meet him outside, she's, he said that she's heard about Cortez. He said, yeah, I got him cremated. And I'm going to spread his ashes around, I think, a street by the stores that he likes to go to. And he said he just want to put his um, ashes there so he can look at the eternity, at the spot, everything. And look look at the spot that he loves to see for the eternity. And he was he was talking to a uh, block about things. And then he said some things that really opened up. And he said that... Um, finish that sorry and he said you know what she realized she realized that he was different and he said you know what we live in a world we all can die soon and for us to move on and to live our legacy we had to live our life we had to live life we had to love we had to enjoy we had to celebrate at things we had to move on I Cortez promised me, I promised Cortez that I will move on and find love. I feel like love that love that again. It's been so long that I have been in that um, feeling, felt that type of thing. And now my love of life is gone. I want to move on. Expand the world to joy, celebrate. And now we got the disease. It's something to look forward to, to live the best of your life and the best as you can. And not to let things hinder you. Because you will be gone dead tomorrow. But you have your life to live. And leave your mark in this world. Like you say. Do what you got to do to leave your mark. And that's what I got from that. And I said that was a powerful last scene. Because it was a powerful message. Love is a message. You need to love you. 
so you can love everything else. You have the love of your life. Like he had the love of like Cortez. But Cortez wished him to move on to love again. To open himself, open his heart, open up again to rush out there to find that love again. Because it, it's not the end of the world. And the fact that you could die anytime soon, you don't want to live in a world like that. That you didn't fight, that you didn't work as much as you can to get a better life for yourself. Whether it's a better relationship, whether it's a better job, whether it's a better work of living, whether it's a better mental health, whether it's a better stage of life. That's what I got from that message. And it was a nice, powerful ending of that um, episode because it's he's like he had a different meaning, had a different outlook. And then he kissed Blanca and then he walked down the street with his nice old yellow on, pipped out suit. It was lovely. And I enjoyed it. It was a good episode, like I said. I really loved the whole episode. I mean, it was touching. It was sad moments that Cortez died. But that's the reality of life. And you just got to go through it. Promise the loved ones that you know who's passing away. That you're going to do better. You're going to live your life. And you're not going to stick stuck in the past. And continue working on your future. So that was Pose. Hope y'all like um, my video. Please like, comment, subscribe to my channel. My channel is Mr. F um, Tom Mizzle. My name is Tom Mizzle. My channel is Mr. 14. And I'll talk to y'all all later for next week's episode of Pose. Thank you. Peace.